Hey, I'm Don Kiske. Thanks for checking out the Whitetail Freaks YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new weekly content. On the last episode of Whitetail Freaks. Where are we going, Buffalo? We're going to put up a redneck, baby! The Landry's made their annual trip to Candyland. One and only. Troy and Jacob would continue their annual battle for the biggest buck. You know, I shot the biggest buck the last two years, and uh, kind of looks like year three is going pretty good for me also. There was plenty of turkey movement along the heavy winds and high heat. I could almost be wearing a bikini out here right now. It's so warm. In the end, Troy would be left wanting. He grabbed it, grabbed it by the shoulder and make me pull my gun back. <laughs> but Jacob would hit big on a nice Candyland chocolate horn monster. Mr. Don told us to go ahead and shoot him. So we pulled the trigger and shoot him, baby. Now, I've been struggling this year. Troy Landry didn't get to shoot him in 2017, but that doesn't negate what he's done over the last five seasons in Candyland. Candyland, I will. Troy has become a regular old whitetail freak around these parts. We just shot a giant Iowa buck on the first night of the Iowa season. And now we're going to take a step back and look at just how much bone this freak has actually collected over his years in Candyland. Yes. <sighs> I'm about to pass out. It's like deja vu for Jacob Landry every year at the Kiski compound. First, he kills the deer. Candy land, baby, candy land. Yes. Then, before they can pack up and go back to the swamp, he must process the deer. This is made easy at the Kiskis, since Don is a big fan of Outdoor Edge products. The Outdoor Edge line of knives, such as the Razor Light and Razor Pro, can do it all, too. With a three and a half inch surgical grade Japanese 420 stainless steel replaceable blade and an ergonomically correct non-slip rubberized TPR handle, the job has never been easier. Always, always use a sharp knife. You make a lot more mistakes with a dull knife than you do with a sharp knife. The Razor Pro also comes with a signature cutting blade that allows you to cut under the skin and open game up like a zipper. This eases the fear of slicing the guts and keeps the hair off the of meat. With the outdoor edge line of knives, Jacob made little work of the chocolate horn 150s class buck he took off the Kiski farms. But now it's just a matter of how much meat they can pack in the Yetis before making the trip back to the swamp. Good old backstrap, Kiski. Get some good eating right there, boy. This past season, only Troy and Jacob drew tags for the trip to Candyland. Jacob filled his. Look at that, huh? What an awesome book. But Troy was left wanting. We struggled this year in Candyland. I can't say we, Jacob shot quick. But I struggled this year in Candyland. Troy did have some great encounters. We fixed to shoot a big one down at uh, I don't care how big it is, this was bigger than Jacob's. Two or three times I had the gun out the window and he grabbed me, grabbed me by the shoulder and make me pull my gun back in. But the way it works in Candyland, they only shoot mature bucks who have reached their potential. Well, you know, we gotta, we gotta respect Don's rules. We might not like them, but we gotta respect them. We're going to shoot a monster buck. Not just a buck. I'm talking about a Boone and Crockett. And we'll be set up. We got a blind set up. And his <laughs> is grass. <laughs> and he comes. Even though Troy Landry missed out on shooting himself an Iowa monster in 2017, let's not forget the damage this swamp freak has done in the past. 
we find ourselves going all the way back to mid-December 2012. While some people were at home waiting for the world to end, Troy Landry was sitting in an Ameristat, watching his first Iowa buck walk into range. Dropped him. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, I'm about to pass out. Yes. I dropped him? <laughs> yeah, he dropped him. Me. I can't tell. So, uh, see his belly? Uh, I thought I was having a heart attack. And so began the Landry Kiston tradition. I want to, uh, I want to thank Mr. Don and Miss Candy Kiski for inviting Jacob and I to come up here and hunt with them this week. Troy would celebrate his first Iowa buck and treat Don and Candy to some southern cooking. Not only were we having a lot of fun in camp, but man, were we eating good. The Landry boys know how to cook. We were having chicken gumbo, sausage gumbo, egg buffet. You name it, these boys know how to cook. This is Troy's famous French fry recipe. <laughs> See how perfectly? I don't know how famous they're going to be, but they're going to be good. <laughs> now that Troy had a taste of Iowa, the Landrys would begin to make Candyland a yearly tradition. And the next year, Troy would be in the exact same field Don put him in the year before. But this time, Troy would get a lesson in history and why passing big bucks pays off. Oh, oh, Don, Don. That's a big buck, a big buck right there. Where? Look in the pot, in the little deed. I looked up and Troy said, oh, there's a big one come out. And he just walked out and just surprised the both of us. Well, the first thing I did, I obviously threw my glasses up to see who it was. It was uh, the, the flat beam eight. Don, you on him? I got him. It was the flat beam eight, a buck with a lot of history, and a buck Don made Troy pass the year before. We seen the exact same flat beam eight that I let go last year. All right, I'm on him. You ready? Take him right there. See what happens here. Down he goes. Good shot, Mr. Troy. Oh, look at a deer in the corner. Same stand, same place, Smoky same night. time, just a year later. That is an awesome, big old giant Iowa buck. Don Kist, if anybody can grow a big buck, you can, buddy. Troy Landry now had two years of candy land under his belt and learned a little bit about the payoff of passing big bucks. Unbelievable. Congratulations. The rags on the pot. That's candy land. That's a candy land buck. <laughs> Congratulations. I've been waiting all year to come to candy land. This swamp freak is truly becoming a full-fledged whitetail freak. Y'all got a camp cook. And look, he didn't lose no weight for the rug, John. By the time Troy was up to bat again, it was the 2014 season, and Chase Landry had already struck. There was one particular buck we were watching, and we were pretty sure it was a four-year-old deer. Had double kickers, had a sticker off the G3 and a sticker off the G2. Very first evening in the hunt, and it was like a 200-yard shot. Chase made a heck of a shot on that deer. What a great way to start off the Landry's third year here in Iowa. And Troy couldn't be more excited for him. You might have broke the record in Candyland. <laughs> Man, <laughs> dirty. <laughs> <laughs> get him, Jacob, get him, get him, get him. We got to, we got to congratulate him. <laughs> I had a tremendous deer picked out. I have two years of history of this deer. I got browning trail photos from the year before, but not only browning trail photos, but I had footage through the scope. Troy wanted this deer. He was foaming at the mouth and getting that blind. The problem was, you know, the wind would be right one day, wasn't the next. Finally got into the right blind one evening. We knew with the wind right in our face that we'd probably see this deer. Everything was perfect. So all small bucks started coming out to the field, eating. I looked at the standing corn at the far end of the field, and I said, Troy, you're not gonna believe it. There's that big, giant buck that we've been looking for. And man, if you've ever been in the blind with Troy, he really gets excited, which, which is super cool, because this is a guy who pulls 13-foot gators out.
I'm shaking right now. So, <laughs> that's like a that's like a 15 foot alligator, <laughs> and I never caught a 15 foot one. Troy now had three trophies taken from Candyland, and this swamp freak turned whitetail freak couldn't be any happier. We just shot a big old buck. We're gonna look for him. Giant, darn kiskit, giant. <laughs> like a 15 foot alligator. The only thing I almost passed out, I got so nervous. Alligator, I never made me that nervous before. Let's go look for him. Candy said today at lunch, she said, you're not going back to that same old blind. <laughs> yep, we gone, we ain't giving up. Now just think if we'd have went somewhere else this evening and you'd had a picture of him on, the, on your brown and trail camera. <laughs> Moving on to the 2015 season, Troy would experience the joy of having two monsters to choose from in one field nemesis buck named Pignose would walk out into the field next to an unknown giant. I'm have to stop watching what he eats before we go on. Oh, I'm good tonight. I ate some of that stuff you cooked last night, though. It might be just as dangerous. I won't be eat none of them big beans because I didn't bring a bottle of that up. Well, I've researched for you. Yeah. He was far, he was way out of gun range, but he st slowly started coming in and coming in and... Before he could get close enough to give us the shot, Big Nose jumped the fence. But we didn't know it at that time, but you had another big buck across the fence. And I guess he went to run the other big buck off. Because the next thing you know, a big buck came out in the field and Big Nose came out right behind him. Troy Landry has a dilemma on his hands that most hunters could only dream of. The mature pig nose is walking in and will soon be in gun range. But now there's another giant in the field stealing some of the spotlight. And he actually looked bigger than pig nose, but we didn't know who he was and we couldn't tell how old he was. Troy isn't the only one to have a situation come up with pig nose in the field. This buck attracts more drama than politicians named Hillary. Candy had the first encounter with this monster all the way back in 2013. But she wasn't able to close the deal when he walked in and out of the field before she could get a shot. Then, late season last year, it was Don with his CVA and at close range. Tell me when. Go. You good? Are you good? Yes. Tell me when. Only to make a clean miss. I don't think Big Nose wanted to let that deer come in the field. I think he wanted to run them off. But we had, all of a sudden, we had to make a choice. We had two giant deer in front of us, Big Nose and Don wasn't sure what the other deer was. We actually talked for five minutes trying to decide which one to shoot. Troy Landry has to make a huge decision. Take the shot on a mature six-year-old or take the shot on an unknown giant. Don wasn't sure which deer the other big deer was. And he actually looked bigger than Pig Nose, but you couldn't tell how old he was. After watching Pignose make his way into range, the decision becomes much more easy. So we decided to go after Pignose. 
Now, Troy is here to show Don and Candy how to close the story on a buck that has brought them so many sleepless nights. Big Nose was raring for a fight with the Unknown Giant, but little did he know, he was about to put himself in another fight. One he had no chance to win. Trouble deciding which one to shoot, but we knew the history on this one was old. Are you serious? Yeah. There's another big one? Oh, yeah. The only thing we didn't know how old the other one was. For four straight years, Troy and his boys have shown they have what it takes to kill big bucks in Candyland. So when the next season rolled around, there was no doubt in anyone's mind they'd do it again. But it wouldn't come easy for any of them in 2016. In fact, it wouldn't be until the last night in camp when all three of them would strike big. Oh, what an awesome deal, man. We've been coming up here the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Jacob oh. shot a giant. My dad shot a beautiful buck. Oh, I killed the big I don't know about all that, but... <laughs> hey, give me some, give me some kiss cake. We just shot a big yeah, old yeah, buck. Yeah, buzzer in your nose, yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I'm beat. We just shot a big old buck and I cut my nose. Well, Jacob and Chase had their bucks in the back of the truck. The only thing left to do now is go back to the Kiski Ranch for a good meal, a good night's sleep, and get up early to go get Papa Troy's before the coyotes have their way with it. Yesterday evening, with the chances, Jacob killed, Chase killed, and Don and I wasn't sure if we were going to shoot this one or not, and then when we heard Chase shoot, we couldn't pass it up. We said, shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good and smelling better. Did he duck it? What the hell? We're getting area shots. Huh? We're getting area shots. Oh. Get the hell in. Every day I want. Crawfish egg souffle. Don't be good. Oh. It's a tree shake. How about you that on TV? It's a tree shake. It's a tree shake. I got this to draw a holiday in the background. It's a tree kick. It's a tree kick. <laughs> <laughs> 